But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Let me tell you about my great God. Hey guys, Pastor Tim here. Hope you guys are doing great. Hope you're ready to get your day started off in God's Word. We are in 1 Kings chapter 10. We are uh, coming to the end of the house of Ahab now. Uh, this is a long time coming. This is something Elijah prophesied would come to pass, and Jehu is the instrument God is using to bring that to pass. Now, Jehu, you'll see a couple times in this chapter, says he's very zealous for the Lord. Come see my zeal uh, for the Lord. But you kind of get the feeling that when he's doing all these things, that yes, he is fulfilling what God wants to happen to Ahab's descendants, but you get the feeling that it might be more out of just his own selfishness and wanting to become the new king and uh, he just goes about things uh, in a very interesting way uh, to where he is fulfilling what God prophesied or God promised to come to pass, uh, but he may not be doing it strictly because he loves the Lord. In fact, we see later on at the end of the chapter, uh, he turns away from the Lord or his heart wasn't right with him really to begin with. But that's something that happens oftentimes in the Bible. God uses a uh, men to fulfill especially when it comes to his judgment, but any, uh, other things as well. And that sometimes means God uses uh, sinful men or heathen uh, men as well. We see that with Nebuchadnezzar and the king of Assyria later on in the history of Israel as well, uh, because God is punishing Israel for their sin. And in this case, he's punishing the kingdom of Israel because of the sins that Ahab continued to do. Now, kind of an overview of this chapter. It's a pretty violent chapter. All right, it starts off with, remember the previous chapter, Jehu took care of Jehoram and Ahaziah, uh, the kings of Israel and Judah. Um, and now he's fulfilling what God has prophesied or what Elijah prophesied. And he's going to take care of the rest of the descendants of Ahab. And we find out at the beginning of the chapter, there's 70 sons or descendants, that's sons and grandsons that Ahab has uh, throughout Samaria and the kingdom of Israel. And Jehu sends out a letter to the elders of the cities that are in charge of the, uh, where these sons are and says, hey, uh, I'm coming to eliminate the house of Ahab. All right, if you're going to protect them, send out a champion, gather your men and prepare for battle. And these guys are like, you know what? This guy, Jay, who just already took care of two kings already, what, do we, what chance do we have to stand up against them? So they send a reply back to Jay, who's saying, hey, we are your servants. Pretty much saying, hey, we want peace. We're going over. We want to make you happy. Do not come and battle us. So seeing that, Jehu sends a second letter saying, all right, if you want this to come to pass, then just send me the heads of uh, the sons of Ahab. And that's exactly what they do. They bring them, all the heads, 70 of them, in baskets, and they put them at the, the gates of Jezreel. And um, Jehu, he moves forward from there. He, he goes throughout all Samaria and taking care of the uh, you know those that were loyal to Ahab, descendants, family members, priests, and so forth. And then we get to the part where he lies and he tells all of Israel, you know what, Ahab, he only worshipped Baal a little, which, you know, in all honesty, Baal, uh, Ahab, he worshipped Baal a lot. But he's putting forth this show saying, Baal, uh, Ahab just worshipped Baal a little. I am going to worship Baal much greater, all right? I'm all about Baal. And so he says, why don't we get everyone in Israel who worships Baal, who's faithful to Baal, to come into the house of Baal, and we're going to worship him together. We're going to have this big uh, just sacrifice and worship of Baal. And this is all a lie to gather in all the worshipers of Baal, the prophets of Baal. And then once he gets them all in the central location in the house of Baal, he sends his soldiers in to eliminate them all. Now, yes, this is fulfilling uh, what God prophesied long ago with Elijah. And we finally get to uh, where he's kind of established as the king. He does take care of some of Isaiah's uh, relatives as well. Uh, but once he's established as king, God, you know, he... he, he he uh, con not congratulates him, but he acknowledges that he obeyed the, the Lord and he promises to uh, keep his family on the throne for four generations. And it could have been longer, but Jehu did not decide to obey God. He did not stay faithful to the Lord and he did not worship Baal. But he went back and he worshiped the same golden calves that Jeroboam brought forward when the kingdom of Israel first started. All right, And he turned away from the Lord and he led Israel still into idolatry and God allowed um, Hazael, man, we met a couple chapters ago, the king of Syria, to continue to battle against Israel, and, and he's slowly chipping away and taking away uh, from the kingdom of Israel, just taking some territory and weakening uh, this kingdom that Jehu has. And it's all because Jehu, uh, like his predecessors, even Ahab himself, continued to reject God and worship false idols. 
Now there's a lot of different things in this violent chapter that you could pick to be your main thing, like your sin will find you out or, or you know, it's, it's always great to see how Jehu sees the sin of Ahab, but he doesn't see his own sin. Just like sometimes man, oftentimes quick to point out what's wrong with someone else, but not quick to point out what they need to correct in their lives as well. But for me, I want to look at the, um, the mercy of God. Now that sounds weird in a violent chapter. And it's something we need to remember that, yeah, you may cringe at some of these things that are happening to uh, Israel in the house of Ahab, you know, all this violence. But you got to understand, God was very merciful to Israel and to Ahab. You know, this was a long time coming. This is something that Elijah prophesied. All right. And we're now in the time of Elisha, years from uh, beyond that point, And God has withheld his judgment all this time. If anything, God has shown many uh, signs and miracles of himself to the people of Israel that should have caused them to understand that, you know what, Jehovah God is the true God, not Baal. Why do we continue to worship Baal? But they continue to reject God. No matter the victories God gave them in all the battles against Syria, no matter all the prophecies that came to pass, no matter the miracles that Elisha or Elijah performed, the people of Israel, despite seeing how great God was, continued to reject him and worship Baal, this false idol. And the biggest um, testament of that fact is when Elijah called down fire at Mount Carmel in front of all these prophets of Baal, in front of all these people who worship Baal, all of Israel, called down fire at, on Mount Carmel, uh, killed all the prophets of Baal that were present there. And it was a great sign of just how powerful God was. Rain came back after three years of drought and famine, yet still Ahab and everyone, in, most everyone in Israel continued to worship false gods, continued to worship Baal. Uh, despite seeing the miracles and the power of Jehovah God. And the reason I said that shows God's mercy is because even after that fact, fact, God continued to give them chances and time and show them signs to give them chances to confess and repent and to come back to Him. But inevitably, justice or judgment will come for their sins. And that's what we see happening to the house of Ahab today. That's all I got for today's chapter, guys. I hope you have a great day. Tell somebody what it is you got out of God's Word. Stay safe, stay healthy. God bless.